So once again, to express our gratitude to all of the uh, cooks and managers and everybody, or the cooks who were here as a whole team that was <laughs> been here over the 10-day period, uh, and uh, others have just been here for a few days and gone back home again, and uh, others have been here all the time, just, just to come for the last part. So cooks present absent, <laughs> and uh, all of the uh, the managers, I think uh, you've done a splendid, stellar job. Much appreciated, and uh, have there been absolutely no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> so, uh, uh, many blessings and our gratitude to all of you. And uh, so now the um, the thread is being wound up, and the uh, uh, the blessing part of the this um, ceremony, the, the chanting part, is is complete. So. You can also take this as an opportunity to be, um, uh, say, recollecting the the blessings for yourself. Because, uh, as I said, you know, the blessings don't just come from outside in; they're also coming inside out. So, don't think that just with the ceremony that that's the end of your blessings. <laughs> but really, the the uh, the the benefit or the the usefulness of a retreat like this is that you you carry your blessings with you, and you realize you, when you run out, you can generate more. That it's really up to us in each moment. Uh, people sometimes they ask to have these ceremonies, and I, I do a lot of I do an awful lot of water sprinkling, <laughs> <laughs> over uh, far more than I've done. I've done a lot more sprinkling in the last three years than I have done in the last thirty. Um, and uh, so people often come and say, "Oh, could you? you know, I need some luck. Uh, I need some luck. I'm opening a new business, or you know, I've got my driving test coming up, or you know." My my son's you know, he uh, he's going to take his exams. Can you give him some luck? And I, and over and over again, I say, well, in Bud in <laughs> in Buddhist tradition, we understand that we make our own luck. <laughs> this is the the uh, the Buddha. You will never find anywhere in the Pali Canon where the Buddha says, um, you know, if you uh, if you stick around me, you know, you'll have good fortune. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work that way. That uh, we make our own luck. We make our we we choose. The things that we do, the things that we say, the places where we go, we we make our own luck, and um, so that it, it's not just a matter of what the weather's doing and <laughs> and the people who we happen to meet. Um, that uh, uh, so uh, uh, the source of our uh, so everyday blessings, but it's how we relate each moment. You know how we uh, develop a skillful attitude and how we handle the ups and downs of life. That's a, we make our luck through the, the attitude that we bring to each moment. So I would really encourage you to see that's the the bless the real blessing is to recognise that <laughs> that uh, we are the we are the so the source of our own good fortune is is within us, and that the, you have those resources uh, inescapably in, inside you, and to really encourage you to to draw upon those. The um, uh, next part of the ceremony is uh, just to make sure that the that the blessings stay with you, <laughs> or that you have open access, free access to your source of blessings inside, is um, to uh, uh, say, uh, formally release you from the eight precepts. So now, <laughs> supper is legal. <laughs> so there you go, just like that. As Tommy Cooper would say, <laughs> just like that. And uh, the um, so uh, uh, not to leave you in danger of, of being swept away by life. We're very happy to help you to determine the five precepts. So those of you who'd like to use this opportunity to uh, take uh, the three refuges and to determine the five precepts, you'll find the words to that. I think on page fifty-six should be. And as you know, we've. Uh, been dwelling, reflecting, particularly on the theme of um, uh, addictions, and um, we're all aware of the fifth precept and its relationship to consuming drugs and alcohol. Um, and so that uh, that is, uh, I think, a um, uh, uh, and I, we even have the, f uh, the the fifth precept organisation representative here. <laughs> So that I, I heartily encourage uh, this uh, when we're taking the the precepts uh, that this is something that uh, we really take to heart and, and put to use. That these are, in a sense, how, this is the kind of suitcase that you carry your retreat with you. 
it's the it's how we we sort of convey ourselves through life yeah, the the framework that helps to carry us safely through the world is is the precepts and that commitment to to the the good and the wholesome and uh, not to dwell upon the fifth precept too much but as we will know and having been um, uh, a, a serious drinker in the past and there there are those here who have been witness to this from my uh, my my uh, errant youth <laughs> At least one witness <laughs> that uh, when the fifth precept goes, the the, uh, the, li the the lifespan of the other precepts is greatly reduced. Right? <laughs> that uh, the uh, if you if you've had a few drinks, your respect for the lives of others diminishes. Your commitment to honesty uh, diminishes. That your sense of whose property, <laughs> what's your property and what's somebody else's diminishes. Uh, sexual desire tends to get far more freely acted upon, um, and uh, the uh, and as for speech, <laughs> just play a recording of yourself next time you've had a few, <laughs> and all those wonderful, br brilliant things that you had to say, those kind of wise remarks when they come back to you. <laughs> it's not so impressive the next day. So uh, the, um, to help sustain, in, in a very direct way, to sustain the, the, um, the value and the effectiveness of all the precepts, that it, it's the, the, the fifth one is, um, uh, is really central in that. It's kind of interesting that when the Buddha explains and expands upon the precepts, often the fifth precept is left out. <coughs> and that uh, because, and this, some of you might think this is a, this is a wonderful karmic loophole, <laughs> the, the first four... So taking life, um, taking uh, the possessions, the things that don't belong to you, so, so killing, stealing, uh, sexual misconduct, and the, the various different kinds of, of false and harmful speech, those, are, those carry an intrinsic negative karmic consequence. So any way that those are acted on, there's going to be a negative result. The fifth precept is not automatic. So some of you are already thinking, oh, right. <laughs> we can negotiate, right? <laughs> And so I just want to make that clear. Full disclosure, as they say in California, full disclosure, <laughs> that, uh, that it's, it's, there's not an intrinsically negative consequence of consuming alcohol or drugs. That it's not as, uh, as immediately negative as, say, taking the life of another being or telling a lie or, uh, or engaging in sexual misconduct. It's not automatic. However, <laughs> as I was just saying, the, the reason why it's, it's there in the five precepts and, and it's very... Um, significantly present when we, we carry out this little ceremony and also in, in being a support for our lives is that the the first four have a very short you know, their, their lifespan is reduced radically when the, uh, the, the the fifth precept is compromised so um, I, uh, I uh, heartily encourage that uh, a sincere commitment to that and not only just as a, a blessing for yourself but also for the people around you to, uh, and it's a uh, it's a, a wonderful gift to be able to say to others, not from a sort of self-righteous sort, you know, kind of, I don't drink, but just to say, no, I don't do that. Sorry, I just, that's, that's not what I do. And so not being a, a condemnation or a criticism of others, but just to, uh, to be an example. And also, if you have children, it's very difficult <laughs> to tell your kids not to, to drink or get loaded if you're busy doing that yourself. Say, How come it's all right for you, Dad? It's not, <laughs> it's not all right for me. And you usually get the answer, well, don't ask questions. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have that issue in my family since, as I told you, I was, had my own beer mug at the age of six. And <laughs> Sunday lunch, I get an inch of, an inch of beer to, as my, my ration. So um, I didn't have to make that excuse in my family, but in, in many others, that's, that's the reason you get told. So to be able to be a, a good example for your kids, to say, you know, this, this is a, a way to do yourself most favors in life and to to keep yourself uh, free from harm, then this is the best way to, to go about doing that and putting the, the odds in your favor. So without further ado, um, if you, those of you who like to make the, the, uh, um, take the refuges and precepts, then you can begin with uh, bowing three times. And then those who are familiar with the request, I encourage to speak, chant with a full voice, and those who are less familiar, just sort of <coughs> tag along behind. So you begin with bowing three times.
Tammo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Buddhang Saranang Chami Tamang Saranang Chami Sanghang Saranang Chami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Chami Dutiyampi dhammang saranangga chami. Dutiyampi dhammang saranangga chami. Dutiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. Dutiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi buddhang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi dhamang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi dhamang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. Ti saranagamanang niti tang. Panati pata. Verapmani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adinadana. Verapmani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi cha chara. Verapmani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musawada verapmani sikha parang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Sura Miraya Majapamadatana Verapmani Sika Padang Samadhyami I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. Imani Panja Sika Padani Silena Suga Tingyanti Silena Poga Sampada Silena Nebu Tingyanti Tasama Silang Viso Taye One of the, the significant things I, I find about 
the Buddhist tradition and the way we do things is uh, there's no single ceremony by which you become a Buddhist. Like, there isn't like a kind of baptism or being born as a as a uh, a Jew or being uh, kind of inducted into the the sort of Hindu faith through Brahmin rituals. Um, that uh, there's no kind of you know one shot and then you're you're in. <laughs> But uh, the the Buddhist tradition, uh, the the uh, the practices that we have is that the, the Buddha understood the problem of erosion, that our our commitment, our our, our interest um, may be very clear and firm and strong one day, and then it erodes, it gets washed away, and uh, and so in in Buddhist tradition, in Buddhist practice, um, it, it's uh, normal, customary. Every time you come to the monastery or the temple, you you, you uh, determine the refuges and precepts again and again and again and again. So to counteract the erosion difficulties, <laughs> so there's a. Um, it's not just a matter of taking the precepts uh, once and then saying, "Okay, that's it. I've I've taken the precepts." But also recognizing this, this is something we can use as an ongoing uh, commitment and uh, and a, and a, a way of refreshing our intent. And as uh, um, I think, it's also recognizing that uh, everybody makes mistakes. I think Big Bird was quoted last night by Vince. Uh, <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. The Buddha recognized, yes, there's, there, there's an erosion problem. We make mistakes. We lose it. We get distracted. But we can begin again. We can start again. And, we, uh, uh, and the precepts are, are a, a very clear and helpful guideline to, to um, uh, help support us. When, when we lose it, when we get carried away, we, we, we say something which is untrue. We flirt with somebody. We get caught up with, uh, with a, um, uh, a, a, uh, an acquisition opportunity. So, Creative, uh, creative um, tax returns, <laughs> taking advantage of some little circumstance where, you know, oh look, <laughs> there's a bit extra for me available there, and no one will know. But as Ajahn Chah would say, but someone does know. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, the, the I would really encourage that using the precepts as an ongoing support for mindfulness and for also for refreshing your intent. And to, to say, um, uh, uh, even when you do lose it, you do get carried away, you get uh, swept up by something, just to recognize you can just um, go to, the, to the, uh, the, the, the precepts and just sit down and, and reaffirm them to yourself. Okay, I lost it there. Right, let's start again. Let's just refresh and begin again. Reboot. <laughs> So the um, uh, the formalities are nearly over, um, but uh, there there is a, a custom that we have. Those who would like to have a an ongoing reminder to um, to something again to take with you and help you to recollect this occasion. That um, uh, if anybody would like a, um, a piece of the the um, blessing cord to be tied around your wrist, then uh, this is also, you might, some of you who maybe uh, come here for the first time might have noticed these sort of ratty bits of string around <laughs> people's wrists. Well, this is, this is how it starts out. <laughs> so anybody who would like to have a blessing cord uh, around uh, their wrist to, to have as a reminder, then uh, do please uh, step right up and then we can, we can make some of these. Can we do some as well?